to the Electricity for HVAC Simulator. This is a series of interactive electrical diagrams of various HVAC systems as well as some system components such as motors, motor controls, and meter use. This particular diagram is of a gas furnace and this is a fairly basic gas furnace in that there is no electronic ignition or anything like this. This is a simple standing pilot gas furnace. If we take a look, we have three electrical loads here. We have the fan motor or the indoor fan motor. We have the transformer, which will step down the line voltage of 120 volts to the control circuit voltage of 24 volts. And then we have a 24 volt gas valve here, which will allow gas to flow to the burners and be ignited by the pilot. We also have three electrical switches. This switch right here, HT, is our system thermostat or our heating thermostat. The next switch is a high limit switch or a limit switch. The limit switch is placed above or in the vicinity of the heat exchanger and will open in the event that there is an overheat condition. An overheat condition is typically caused by a lack of or loss of airflow, meaning possibly a dirty filter, a faulty fan motor here, or possibly a bad fan switch that, that doesn't turn the fan motor on. Occasionally this can also be caused by an oversupply of fuel, although this is fairly rare. The last switch, which I just mentioned, was the fan switch. This switch closes on a rise in temperature and turns the fan motor on. In other words, we're going to let the heat exchanger heat for a brief period once the burners fire so we don't blow cold air into the space and make the occupants fairly uncomfortable. This switch typically closes at approximately 120 to 140 degrees. So let's take a look here. We're going to select the system thermostat and we're going to turn it up above the space temperature which is currently 69 degrees so as we turn it up we can see that the heating thermostat closes which allows current flow to the gas valve and now our gas valve is energized and it is sending fuel to the burner which is now ignited and the burn gets to heat the heat exchanger the heat exchanger heats the temperature starts to rise and eventually this fan switch would close and turn the fan motor on. So let me turn the internal temperature up here a little bit and see what I'm talking about. There we go, at about 120 degrees the fan switch closes on a rise in that temperature and energizes the fan motor. We're now delivering heat to the space. Okay. Last thing, the high limit switch. Uh, high limit switches open at various temperatures depending on make and model of the furnace and the type of furnace that's being used. Now, don't forget, once you feel you have a great understanding of the components and their function within the circuit, as well as a pretty good idea of the sequence of operations, you can use the meter down here to test various components. Now you can just test these on your own, or what I would suggest is placing the diagram in what we call challenge mode. So if you click on this tab at the top left, just below the home, and click challenge mode, once it launches, you'll be able to select from a series of faults to see what these faults look like. In addition, you'll also be able to take a quiz to test your mastery level of this particular wiring diagram. So now to launch the fault list, we have this little X within the circle. It's the third one down. We click on that and you can see we can place faults in any of the components here. So for example, if we were to put a fault in a, you know, the fan switch here, we click on this. Now what we can do is we can take the meter out of the toolbox down here, turn it to AC volts, and we can drop these leads at any of the glowing hot spots that we see here. I'm going to store them temporarily. Now when I come down here, I'm going to turn the system thermostat to call for heat, so I'm going to turn it up above the room temperature. And as we can see, the thermostat closed, we have power to the gas valve. Okay. Now, once we reach approximately 120 degrees, the fan switch located up here should close and turn the fan motor on. So let's see what happens here. Okay, If we turn the internal furnace temperature up, and this would be the temperature above the heat exchanger, at approximately 120 degrees we notice this fan switch does not close and the fan motor wouldn't operate. What would happen here is the burners would continue to run for a brief period until the temperature around the heat exchanger uh, became excessive. This would then cause the high limit switch here to open and de-energize the gas valve, extinguishing the burner operation. The high limit will also cycle, so once things have cooled down, it will close again and reignite the burners, and this cycling will typically continue on a residential gas furnace. So to check the fan switch, we know it should be closed because our internal temperature is at 142. 
we can drop the meter leads right at the glowing red hot spots. Now we should have zero volts across here. There shouldn't be a difference in potential when the switch is closed. And when we drop the two leads on here, we can see that we've got 120 volts, which indicates we have a difference in potential across the switch, which means in fact that it just verifies that the switch is open. This is a faulty fan switch uh, and it would need to be replaced. Now I'm going to store the meter lead here for just a little bit. And if we look back over here again, you can review the sequence of operations here by clicking this second tab down. And I strongly suggest you take the quiz. Click on the star. Uh, there's a series of questions again that will test your mastery of this and a score of 90% above will earn you a badge. Good luck to you. Hey, it is Craig with Interplay Learning. We hope you enjoyed this last video. The easiest way to keep up with all of our latest videos is by subscribing to our page right here. Just to let you know, if you're interested to learn how simulations are critical to onboarding and improving you or your employees' performance in the field, please visit us at interplay-learning.com.